What's up guys? So I don't typically do videos on current events and things that are happening around the world, but this particular event at Astro World really hits home for me and I just felt called to make this video. And no, I wasn't there, but I was in Houston at a music festival just the weekend before at Freaky Deaky. If you're new here, I'm Sarah and I help teach people how to find inner happiness through fitness and spirituality. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Astro World, what happened and what the real deep problem is here. I am a big big festival goer. I go to electronic dance music festivals. I've been going to them for about 10 years. I've probably been to 30 festivals, well over 100 concerts. It is my absolute favorite thing to do. I love going to festivals. I love going to concerts. I love dancing and to think that all of these people we're going to have a good time, spend time with friends and loved ones and, and see music they enjoy. Not that Travis Scott is really my style, but my music is in a lot of other people's type of music. So that's beside the point. But you know, all these people were going to have a good time. It was something they were looking forward to. It was something that no one, no, that like, <laughs> I'm just so distraught over this whole thing, so I do apologize ahead of time if I'm a little all over the place during this video. I'm just so beside myself. I'm so upset. I'm so angry because I feel like this didn't need to happen. Those eight, I think it's up to 11 people now, didn't need to die because of going to a music festival. And there were so many things that were done incorrectly. And I'm not going to sit here and say, I blame only Travis Scott. Was he a part of it? Yes. Has he been sued in the past? Yes. Was he encouraging the rage mode? Yes. But so do a lot of other music artists. Now, on the other hand, security saying that you know they were only there to make sure that people weren't scalping tickets they weren't actually thoroughly checking bags they weren't checking ids they weren't doing the things that security like like you should feel comfortable at a music production because security is there you should feel safe you should know that there's people there that are watching out for you and protecting you <laughs> and to think that they weren't even doing that huge problem but that being said, the number one biggest problem, in my opinion, that happened at this festival were the people, were the people that went to this festival. And that is because, it, it, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you have done research on this, which is probably why you're watching this video. And I've, I've read so many articles, I've seen so many interviews, I've just, I've, it's just, I actually had to stop because I was getting so upset about everything that I was hearing with the way that the people in the audience were treating each other. And there's a lot of people out there saying, hey, well, it's this community, it's this music community. And I feel a little conflicted on that. I don't know that. I don't typically go to those type of music shows, but I will say in the decade that I have been attending music festivals, have people passed away? Have people overdosed? Have things like that happened? Yes. But I could probably tell you in the 10 years that I've been doing this, there's probably been less than 10 fatalities through all of them combined. Now, yes, I wish there were none. I, I truly, it just breaks my heart to think that people would go to a music festival and not come back. Um, I didn't, <laughs> I was like so fired up. I didn't think I was gonna get teary eyed, but it's just like, it's just a really, really sad thing. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because it truly breaks my heart that people were not looking out for one another. One of the medics posted a video explaining his point of view and what had happened and how 
in between one call and the other, he saw, you know, three people were down and like not breathing and they didn't have a pulse. And the one girl they said, you know, had been down, they, the, the, the people that grabbed the medic told the guy that she's been down for 10 minutes and he goes over and she is on the ground still. No one tried to help her. Like, I just, I cannot wrap my head around the fact that there were tens of thousands of people at this festival, at this stage, watching people drop like flies, unable to breathe, passing out, like losing consciousness and no one's helping them? Like, what are we doing guys? What are we doing as a society where we are not taking care of one another? Like we, we were put here, we were put here on earth, on this planet to love, to love one another, to be kind to one another, to help one another. And that to me is the most heartbreaking part of this entire thing. And you can't, you can't go and blame it on one person. And that's why I'm going to sit here and say it was everyone's fault combined. There were things that everyone could have done. Travis Scott, yes, should have stopped the music. The security should have done their jobs. Maybe they should have had more medics or more security there. But the audience, we like, oh, the audience was just not helping one another. And look, I know what it's like. I'm five foot two. There's plenty of times I've been in these crowds and I never go to the front. I've never been one to go to the front. It's just, I just, I don't like being crammed in like that, especially with my height. And even when I was at, you know, in Houston the weekend before at Freaky Deaky, there were times where we were in the crowd and I'm way shorter than all my friends. And I was like, guys, like, I gotta get out. Like I like, I'm, everyone's a foot taller than me. Everyone's towering over me. And like, I'm, I'm getting anxious. I'm getting anxiety and we get out of the crowd, but that wasn't even an option at this. People were crowd surfing people to get them medical attention that <sighs> when we're driving, right? We're driving on the road and an ambulance comes up. It has its sirens on, it's going, the lights are flashing. What do we do? We pull over. We pull over and let them through to the emergency. And all these medics are saying that that was not happening. They were fighting to get through the crowds, fighting to get to these people, fighting to save these people's lives. And people were not letting them through. People were pushing forward, people are hitting each other. Like, look, I go in mosh pits. Like, I know I'm a little, little petite girl, but like I go in mosh pits sometimes because there's etiquette. There's etiquette in these things and people are still looking out for one another. And look, I'll tell you, I only stay in them for like 30 seconds because I get scared and I run away. <laughs> but I'm just like, where's the love? That, that Black Eyed Peas song, where is the love? I mean, it is just, tragedy after tragedy after tragedy and when is it enough when is it going to be enough for people to stop being so <sighs> there's a difference between being selfish and giving yourself self-love and i feel like those two words are intertwined as the same thing and guess what trampling on someone when they can't get up and they're unconscious and they can't breathe that is selfish that is not self-love to get you up to the front of the stage. Like, I'm so bothered by this because it is such a big part of my life and these things didn't have to happen. And I am just so heartbroken for the friends and the families of these people who said, hey honey, have a good time, you know, see you after. And that didn't happen. And it didn't happen because of all the other people that were there, because of the people that were breaking in, because of the people that were just so focused on this, they're idolizing a, a human being. And, and that's a whole other topic that I don't even, this video will go on forever if I get into that kind of stuff. But a lot of people were saying it felt that there were demonic presences there and that it felt like people and the atmosphere was being taken over and even people that had been to other Travis Scott shows 
have said the vibe, the, the, the energy was just very off and it was very different during this show. And I think we need to remember that celebrities are there to entertain us. They're there to give us art and music. And look, I'm an actress, like it, it, it's, it's acting, it's a job, okay? Like they are not there to worship. Worship God, worship your higher self. Like that is what should be worshiped. When we start worshiping people and things that are not our creator, things like this happen, okay? I'm not gonna get super into that. If you're out there following a lot of this stuff, you know that we're in a huge bout of spiritual warfare right now. And I do believe that that was a huge part of this. But the thing is, is that could have been stopped by us, by the people that were in the crowd, by the audience that were in the crowd and their behavior. And guess what? It's not an excuse to say, oh, well, you know, I was pushing up like that because I was drunk or I was doing that because, you know, I was, you know, effed up. No. If that's how you're behaving when you are taking these substances, that's a freaking problem. And that's what allows those entities to enter into you and start to begin to take over. And when you have a crowd that big, when this is happening, what, what else would happen? So I'm sitting here, I'm on here. I'm begging you, please take care of each other. Like, we're all we got. <laughs> We're all we have. We are here to love one another and take care of one another and, and life should be about love and enjoyment and fulfillment, having a good time and, and being able to go to a festival or a concert and not have to worry about someone running around and injecting you with drugs or shooting you outside of a hotel room. It's so sad. It's so sad. Just love. That's all you need to do. Love yourself, love others, love your friends, love your family, love people you don't know. Take care of as many people as you can and if the whole world did that, it would transform. And it is possible, I know so many of us feel like, oh, it's too late, you know, it's too late, like our world's already too screwed up, it's just going downhill. Trust me, like, I get it. <laughs> I feel that way very often, especially when things like this happen but we have the power to change that. We have the power to turn that around just by loving each other. Do everything in love. Love one another, take care of each other. Love yourself. I love you. I love you guys so much. Like even though whoever is watching this video, I, I, probably, I probably don't know you personally, like I still care about you and I love you, please. Just take this message, take care of one another, pray for those that didn't make it back and for their friends and for their family and pray and, and meditate and do all those things every day. Just do one thing, just do one thing. Love one person, hold a door for one person, open the car door for one person, help one person across the street. Just do one thing every day, at least one thing. And I promise you, we can change the world just by loving one another. I love you guys so much. Please stay safe. And don't forget, be limitlessly yourself.